Hey, welcome back to the DJ V on Fire podcast. I'm your host, David Joshua Vales. It has been a while. This is a prequel, sequel. I guess it wouldn't be a sequel to uh, our season three kickoff coming up soon. Uh, with me today is none other than Joseph Anthony DeCenzo, better known as JAD. Maybe not better known as, but uh, yeah. um, he is here today. Um, he is one that helped kick off the original series a couple of years ago. It feels like an eternity ago, Joe, but it actually yeah. has only been, we did it in 21 and now it's 23. So it's only been a couple of years, but uh, yeah. a lot has happened since then. Yes, indeed. Well, I feel like in this prequel, sequel, whatever you were calling it, we got to uh, kind of take a moment to just catch up with DJ V here a minute and reverse the, t- reverse the course here instead of you asking me questions, me kind of throwing it back to you and saying like, man, tell us about... Um, DJV's life as it has uh, transpired over the last few months. I know it's been uh, it's been a, it's been a ride. Uh, it has, it has. So this is a crazy time to be kicking off a new uh, season. But um, you know, I kind of felt, as did you, kind of an opportunity here. So um, a, a way back machine was when I was 15. I had Hodgkin's disease. I found a lump in my neck, and uh, had it taken out, checked out. It was uh, non hot or it's Hodgkin's disease. And uh, I had radiation for three months while I was a sophomore in high school. Um, and that put it into remission for over 30 years. So, you know, your annual checkups, your every five-year checkups, um, all was good. And then probably early spring, I noticed another lymph node uh, that was swollen in my neck. You know, and I'd, I had swollen lymph nodes prior. Um, but it was a matter of, like, just keeping an eye on it, see if I got a cold, see if it goes down. And uh, this one didn't seem to change. So uh, in June, I had an opportunity to, uh, I actually went into the doctor. He checked everything else except that lymph node. And I had just, for some reason, it didn't cross my mind to ask him. I think I was just still hoping that it was going to go away. And then as the weeks progressed in June, you know, kind of like a gut feeling or a God feeling was uh, something bigger is is happening here. And um, you know, I think with the radiation treatment 30 years ago, we've come a long way. But uh, when you get radiation kind of like zapped into your body um, in the 90s, early 90s at that, um, there is always a te- uh, possibility of lymphoma forming. So, um, you know, I had a stomach ache that I think it was more God ordained because um, it, it's not actually tied to the lymph nodes at all. I think it was just nerves. Um, I started getting tested in July and uh, I got the diagnosis at the end of August that it was non-Hodgkin's lymphoma is what he officially diagnosed me as. And so uh, as we record this right now, I am in, I have just finished cycle two of chemotherapy and I'll have uh, six cycles um, uh, to combat this and kind of put this part into remission as well. So that's kind of a two minute update. Uh, on what uh, has transpired over the last couple of months. Yeah, that's. thank you for sharing it. I think, uh, man, I don't know if everybody that's watching realizes how long we've known each other because it's been a minute. So I want to say that, well, I know that we were in cahoots, like at least we were in the same building when you went through this that first, that first battle. Um, and then we started playing basketball together, I think, post that. And I started rolling my ankle every game. And then you carried me off the, off the floor. But um, I was an old man even then. But um, but it's been a minute, man. I mean, we're talking, you said, almost 30 years, right? Yeah, over 30 years, yeah. Yeah, so, um, man, that's just crazy. You talk about the, the cycles, right? Um, I was blown away just real quick. I don't know if everybody understands this either. A cycle, I didn't realize it was – you're in the chair for how long? So um, the way this works is the cycle for me. Now, every chemo treatment is different. This is okay. non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Um, you know, you could look it up. There's this, There's actually a couple of different types of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Uh, but they have a regimen that they've been using. Um, and I kind of got an updated, uh, updated uh, regimen one that they feel is going to be more uh, hopeful um, for long longevity. Uh, but anyway, so I sit in the chair the first cycle. It t- took over eight hours. It actually pushed me into a second day of chemotherapy, uh, multiple bags 
Um, and they just take it slow the first time and watch for any side effects. Because if anything's going to really happen, um, it's going to happen right as the, those bags are kind of being, uh, not to be direct, but pumped into you. I have a port uh, that's under my skin that's going to be here for a while. They just connect it with a needle and uh, get to, to get to work. So I they had to come back the next morning. Um, so it, it technically is a one day treatment is what they say. I, I'm, I was there with many other people, but I was there the longest. Uh, many people are just coming in for a couple of hours and leaving. Um, I know a friend who had uh, testicular cancer and he was in the chair eight hours a day for five days. And then he was off for three weeks, uh, you know, two more weeks. So what I have is one full day and then I actually have three full weeks off. Um, and at the first week, I'm taking a uh, steroid to keep, keep me strong. Uh, I help my body fight. The second week is we're, we're recording right now my second week. So we kind of postponed this today because I kind of was just feeling under the weather, a lot of fatigue. And so, um, and then next week, I should feel kind of back to normal. And the closer I could get the baseline every time, you know, the better it is for me to battle. So um, I'm hopeful. I'm trying to take days off and uh, I mean, we can talk about work or whatever. But so it's one full day, which was about six hours, the second cycle. Um, you know, I'm, I'm glad that uh, my body can handle kind of getting it done quicker. Uh, I didn't feel anything different taking it over a day and a half rather than six hours. Um, and now it's just a matter of like letting it kind of run its course, do its job and get to the next cycle uh, as we go. It's crazy. I like I'm an idiot, right? So I'm I'm texting you the before the first and I'm like, wow man, you gotta be in, in the in the hospital or in the clinic for seven hours straight sitting there. I'm thinking bored out of your mind. I'm like, hey, can can I come up there and hang out with you? You're like, nobody can come up. I'm like, what? Like this is crazy. I don't I know nothing. But that being said, like it it really kind of underscores the the I don't know, just the the solo battle that this can sometimes feel like, right? So you've encouraged a lot of people over the years. I mean, your 2020 journey, um, you know, I hopped on those first, that first round of texts and it was amazing. Mm -hmm. And I know you've, you've expanded to so many more people as well. And you're kind of known for that now. So in the midst of all this, like how do you keep your head in the game when you've been encouraging so many other people along the way? That's a good question. Um, I've someone asked me the other day, how you know, how am I feeling? How am I doing? And uh, I considered that the last three and a half year journey for me, starting at the beginning of 2020 or right before 20, you know, the end of 2019. Um, I've been I've been preparing for three and a half years for a, a six month fight here. Mm. If you consider me getting tested in July and then. My last cycle is, if, if all goes well, as the Lord willing, uh, my last cycle would be December 26th. So I would be my healthiest on Christmas Day. Amen. Right. Uh, then the next day uh, would be uh, my the last cycle. Now I would have a few weeks there where my body would be fighting. Um, and then there is some immunotherapy afterwards, but as far as the straight chemo drug, it's there. So you could say that, you know, I, I, I prepared three and a half years for uh, you know, this half year battle, you know, and it, so you can consider it a four year journey, mm. you know, presidencies are four years, Olympics are every four years, you graduate high school and college in four years. Uh, sorry for all the analogies, but well, you're you a know, math guy, you're a math guy, you got to bring the it, numbers in. It's just something that you look at. And so yeah. as I was, you say, I was motivating people. The key to that was always that um, I was motivation, my motivating myself in motivating others. Um, what I have found is that um, some of the catchphrases that people use, um, you know, God wouldn't give you more than you can handle. Um, uh, some others. Uh, God gave you this for a reason. God allowed this for a reason. Uh, you know, I think that it's by themselves are not always uh, easy to take in for people. Yeah. Um, if you've done kind of the work that, uh, I put in and people around me have put in over the last three and a half years. Uh, and that, that includes trying to push yourself to be comfortable being uncomfortable. It includes remembering that one of my quotes the other day was, uh, you have to do it by yourself, but you can't do it alone. 
uh, that just happened to pop up in one of my quotes the other day yeah, uh, from a few years ago. And it just popped up the other day. And it's like, yes, yeah, so I know that I, I'm the one in the chair. I'm the one getting the medication. I'm the one that has to, you know, not have any guests while I'm there. Uh, I'm the one that gets the fatigue and the sickness. But um, I know that I couldn't do it without the support of the men that have been praying, the women that are praying, the men that are fasting, uh, my everybody you mentioned, volleyball team. Uh, I don't know if you mentioned all these people before, but uh, people are just coming out of the woodwork, you could say. Um, and and so the the work that I put in helps a phrase like, um, you could do anything, you put your mind to it. Uh, it makes it a little bit better. I have not, you might, you might have this on your list of questions, but there has not been a point ever in the last however time that I went, uh, God, why would you give me this? I've got a beautiful family and blah, blah, blah. That is, that is not even a question, even saying out loud right now, there's, there's no desire for me to go down that road of, uh, of why. Uh, another quote I passed on today was, um, the greater the difficulty, the greater uh, the overcoming and the, I, I don't want to say, I don't think it was reward, but it was uh, the greater the honor in what you overcome. And so uh, this may not seem like a normal response, but I'm excited to say that I'll be a two-time cancer survivor. Like that's something that actually, like I, we talk about trophies of the mind, like that's, that's a trophy that I strive for uh, to be able to say that with uh, God's help. Uh, I, you know, I would, I'm one, someone that could say I'm a two time cancer survivor. And, and so I don't need to ask God questions because, um, because I just, it's just not necessary for me at this time. Yeah. I, I think, uh, you know, as I've been, you know, arm's length away, obviously from, from this journey, but I was like, beat it once, beat it again. I mean, that's just the bottom line, you know, we're, we're, we're in that mindset and, um, you know, you, you've mentioned uh, a bunch of people, right? You've mentioned all the, you know, the the people that are praying, uh, the guys that are fasting that are coming alongside. You know, you've got. Um, I mean, we had a uh, your fam kind of tried to surprise you with uh, with a support night at uh, at uh, Sandberg, and yeah. uh, that was awesome. Um, and so, like. I don't know, maybe describe a little bit of that because I'm not sure, you know, I, I follow you on Instagram and, you know, I, I kind of see a little bit more maybe than others, but you know, if they, if you have, if you don't, it's uh the Instagram is the handles. Is it just DJV on fire? Yep. Follow DJV it, on can, fire. Yeah. You yeah. can just see, see a little bit more of kind of the background, but describe a little bit about what it means to have people, man, you know? Um, so just starting, we, we're not trying to name drop the Instagram uh, for <laughs> likes, um, no. but I, I, every cycle I kind of document my journey. Um, the, it, it has pictures and things that people have shared and send me every day through text, through messages, through the mail, dropped off at my door, sent to me at school. Um, it's just been an, an incredible um, uh, journey for me to see this outpouring of support and the lord has really kind of pushed me to just be accepting because he's he's blessing well i'm being blessed 100 percent, but he's he's having the opportunity to bless people through blessing me and um i think that's that's kind of important that was or, or words, words like that, that. but anyways, but anyways uh, uh, my volleyball, my volleyball team, team. Um, the school, the school yeah, teachers, teachers at school, at school um, just, just reaching, reaching out, out and having, having a, 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 so I walked so I into that, that gym and my entire volleyball team, team has green jerseys, jerseys on, on, which I, you know, our colors are blue and yellow, which makes green, but that's all another story. But they're wearing these blue jerseys, green jerseys, you know, the ribbon on the sleeve, and one side of the gym is packed with JV parents and play fans wearing Green, green legs, legs and green, and green shirts, shirts and these blue, blue shirts, shirts with these with green, green letters, letters that say uh, his fight is our fight and it's day one. Um, um, along with all the church family, family. I, mentioned I mentioned the band, the band and church the other day. They took off from, from practicing for Sunday, Sunday morning, morning so that they could come and support me, which is incredible because I just know how much time it goes into planning and preparing for a Sunday. Um, and then um, on the then other, other side, side of the gym, gym was just, just my, my family, family, my aunts, my uncles, cousins, cousins uh, uh, just, people just people that, that you know, you know I, I see at Easter and Christmas, Christmas, here they are coming to the gym and packing it. 
And so, and so I kind of had the, 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 the three world church, church uh, work, uh, work and, and uh, church, church work and family, family yeah. kind of all in one place, place all, all just, just having, having my back. My back. And so, but that kind that of support and positivity, positivity, I just I don't just know how. how you know, you know, I want to be hopeful, hopeful, feel the feel joy, joy, feel the love, love you know, feel, feel all of what God, God is uh, represented, represented by, by all those people. people. Yeah, I know uh, one quick one that uh, I'm aware of is uh, a guy that we both know, Bobby. He he sent you a, a scripture passage, and I think I think you said, did did somebody tell you to send this to you, or did Joe t- tell you to send this to me, or something like that? And uh, and you're and he was like, no. And it was I think it was it was either a song or a scripture, right? That was like right in line with what you had been looking at. Yeah, yeah you put, put me on the spot, spot because, because I'm not going to be able to pull out uh, um, right, right now. now. Um, but the, the fact, fact that it came, it came like, like three or four, four in a row, row. Uh, yeah. you know, I, I saw, saw myself, myself on, on social, social media, media. Uh, uh, and then, then someone texted, texted it to me, me. Uh, um, and then I saw what I was reading, and then he sent me it. You know, you know, so I'm like, oh, I saw it once, once that, I'm like, oh, that's, oh, that's good, good, good word. word. And then and I saw it a second, second time, and that's, that's my confirmation moment. moment. Like, oh, um, here's, here's my, uh, here's my confirmation of God. God. Here's, here's the third, the third time. time. And then yeah. it took about a week, week. and then he goes, sorry, I didn't email or text you sooner, but this was on my heart today. So he said he had gotten it sooner, but, you know, for whatever reason, he waited to send it, and it was right on, I think it was the day of the first team, which was the day before it just kind of like solidified, solidified uh, uh, that verse for me, that confirmation. So, so. Yeah. Um, that was the Joshua verse, right? It was the Joshua verse? Uh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. Yeah. So um, that, that kind of stuff just doesn't happen when you're, you know, you're, I don't know, you're just not connected to other people. And I think, um, you know, you, uh, you've done, a, a, an, you've done an amazing job just being able to connect with others in your own way, the DJV way, you know, and, um, I appreciate that about you and and all the encouragements. Now, now you, it's it's kind of like you created this monster. So now, all that payback's coming back to you now. So you're welcome. From uh, so you can just thank yourself for that. But um, no, I know it um, means a lot. It's like other point. other schools, like other other like your your nemesis and stuff like that, right? Are kind of like showing support for you, which is not um, like your team showing support is one thing, but you know. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to raise things earlier. earlier. I don't know how much time we have on this podcast. podcast. Uh, I know it's only a bit. So we are in Chelsea, Bowling, High School. You know, you know they're, they're just uh, they're uh, they're a conference rival, rival, but, but you know, I wouldn't say they're anything special. You know, Andrew, Andrew, Andrew High School's down the road. Stag is down the road. Bowling is probably as far from Sandburg as you can get in the conference. And I walk in and they're all wearing these Carl Sandburg volleyball shirts with DJG on the sleeve. Um... They don't purchase, purchase the shirts and support, support uh, this endeavor of non and 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 that kind of just so happened, happened that September was my first treatment, treatment and, and that was non and Fomo awareness, awareness month. month. So it kind of just was month, you know, just nailed it on the head. Um, they did a 50-50 raffle at the football game. So Bolingbrook volleyball team, who really doesn't know me, but someone they see twice a year, maybe once a year. Uh, goes out on a Friday night during the football game, and they do a uh, 50-50 raffle um, to raise money for myself and non Hodgkin's lymphoma. And then they, the two captains of the team read a letter that talks about uh, how I transcend, this is their words, not mine, uh, transcend more than just a team, but a conference, but a sport uh, in the state of Illinois. Uh, it just blew me away that um, that uh, they would do that. So the, the kindness... Um, that the Lord is is uh, kind of giving me is uh, it's just home laying and it's it's a it's a it's an amazing it's an amazing experience. Um, I say that more to the glory of the God. You know what I mean? It's like um, I could talk about how great, great I must, I must be, be. Um, or it's the fact that um, you know in, in anything God can bring glory uh, and and honor and praise to Himself. So. Um, it's definitely something that's been huge. Just, uh, I, I know you might circle back to it, but you're kind of in the group, so you might not. But I know that there's a group of men specifically. You know, you, if you know specifically um, some women as well, but we had a little group of men uh, that kind of stuck together last year. Um, and then you have another group this year. But I know that when I'm sitting in that chair, that there's a group of men that are have fasted 
either that entire day, the day before. I know that you had fasted during a testing. I know that, Joe, you had them fast. Um, and I com completely, I, that is in the back of my mind as I'm sitting there, um, that these men are making the sacrifice and doing what the Bible had asked them to do um, in a time of need. And so, you know, I give you, I try to remember the second amount of the chair to send you a note, hey, I'm done, it's three o'clock. And so uh, for anybody that is going quite long, long there, but, but um, you know, yeah, I know these men would go three, four, four five, five days, days and they have for their own, own uh, uh, needs. needs. Uh, but, but it's just, it's just incredible, incredible to know that that's, that's what I got happening. You might not be able to be there sitting next to me, Joe, but you know, I think what you're doing is actually bigger and better. That's awesome. Yeah, well, it's it's been pretty cool. And I think, you know, what it says is like, you know, there's people, there, there are good people out there and there are faithful people out there. And there's a community that is just, you know, sometimes just, a, you know, a reach out away. And, you know, if you wouldn't have taken those steps three years ago, you know, it, it may be a different story now. And, and I think it's just an encouragement for everybody to, to find, find your people and, and get connected. I know, um, you know, that group of guys that went together last year, you know, it was uh, it was a big commitment and we, we all hung in there. So you mentioned um, shifting gears just a sec. Um, you're, you're welcome. This is your deal, man. You can come back to anything. But you've mentioned green a couple of times. I went I, I didn't have my bracelet on, but I just put it on. And and uh, it's this color green is connected to the non the non Hodgkin's lymphoma is that that's kind of the explanation of that. Right. Uh, uh, yeah. So if you so Google, Google non Hodgkin's lymphoma, lymphoma uh, uh, ribbon, ribbon, it comes, it comes back, back to this kind of, kind of uh, I don't know if it's, know if it's called counter, not, not like 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 uh, uh, but it, it, it kind of is um, uh, what represents it and kind of brings awareness to it. And I appreciate the bracelets. Um, I had a, a, a one of my players again, a volleyball player. She graduated two years ago. I haven't heard from her at all on social media or anything. I then just popped up in my inbox. Um, it just said, um, St. Mary's fights for Coach Bales. And here she is in her, you know, October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And so she's wearing pink uh, for her volleyball match. And then on her sleeve is this green ribbon that she got all her teammates, St. Mary's Colleges in South Bend, Indiana by Notre Dame. And um, just to see her honoring uh, you know, she definitely could have gone 100% uh, breast cancer awareness, keep the pink jersey, uh, but she kind of wanted to take an opportunity um, to pay it forward with the green ribbon as well. So uh, any kind of awareness we could bring to this. Um, I, I did do some research. I try not to Google a ton because um, one of my other favorite things I said in church the other day is, um, it was about facts. You remember facts? Um, facts are just, Facts aren't important, something like that. Um, and so, sure, I could Google some things. Do you remember what the phrase was? I think it was, think it was just that facts are just history, is historical. All they do is they, they don't tell the future or something to that effect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Facts, facts talk, talk about, about the, the past. past. Um, and, so and so sometimes, sometimes you look at facts, facts and, go, and go, oh, oh look, here's, here's the some things for non Hodgkin's. Hodgkin's. Um, so, um, so I looked, I looked it up. It up. Um, um, they do they not know what triggers it. Again, I think partially it is due to the radiation from literally 30 years ago. It just kind of sits in the back of your system. Um, it, they're starting to think that it could be pesticides. Um, I am a one in 5,000 chance of this specific uh, lymphoma. Um, so I, I guess that's good odds or bad odds, depending how you want to say it. But um, it's not a very common disease out there. Um, but I do appreciate the fact that the research is being done. They're trying to improve it um, and that they do have a regimen. I met a gentleman on the cruise. We took a cruise, Maurice and I, 25 year anniversary. And uh, a gentleman had just so happened to have had non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. And he's a 22 year survivor. He had it when he was 32. And so I'm kind of using his model as a model for myself and a belief that, uh, you know, it worked for him. It's going to work for me or, you know, God had healed him, God could heal me. So um, it's just been kind of crazy if we had three hours to do a podcast, all the different turns, turns and twists and, twists and, and uh, uh, coincidences, coincidences that have happened. happened. But, 
Yeah, I know Joe Rogan. I don't really listen to his podcast, but I've heard his podcasts are very long. So, I mean, we could do one of those, but we're, we're not going to today. So we're I've already talked to your wife about these. We're going to figure out how to get more of these and get these ha- handed out to other folks that weren't able to be at that game. And I know that I think they ran out that night, but um, we're going to get more just so we can keep the awareness up. And, you know, um, you know, if there's if there's an organization that people want to support, definitely um, we'll, we'll post that in the, in the description of the video or along, mm-hmm. along the way. But um, for sure, for sure. Um, yeah. So one of the things that uh I was challenging you, man. Let's, let's talk about this Grand Canyon thing real quick, because I feel like that Grand Canyon trip. Just so everybody knows, we this man. He's like, "Hey, Joe, let's hike to the bottom of Grand Canyon back up." And I'm like, "No." I'm like, "Fine." So anyway, we we went through that process. It's a big a big deal. You got to get a permit. You got to go through a company guide that guide you through the whole hike. Day day one is down. Day two is across. Day three is up. Right. And then we did, our permit didn't get it, didn't get approved, so we didn't go. And I was like, "This is brutal." So I just texted you, like, I don't know, pretty early on, and I was just like, "We need to get that Grand Canyon trip scheduled again." So we have a goal, and I think you gave me like an emoji back that I wasn't sure how to read it, but um, I'm just keeping it out there, keeping that conversation warm. I'm just letting you know. Uh, yeah, yeah, so, so part, part of the, of the, the, the uh, three, and three and a half years, years was challenging yourself to do some things that make you uncomfortable, to make you comfortable, to face your fears, to try something new, to make a, you know, to make memories. It, I was just talking to Ethan about Christmas time. He's like, I'm getting excited Christmas in a couple months. And, uh, you know, I said, but what do you really need? Or even what do you even want? You know, what is it you, you know? And he couldn't really come up with too much many things. And I said, wouldn't it be better to start having more experiences in life rather than buy things? I said, do you remember our we did a we did a Grand Canyon trip as a family, but we just drove there, we stayed on the rim, and then we just kept going. It was a couple of weeks with a extended family. But uh, he goes, oh yeah, I remember this that we went here, we stopped here. I go, good. What what did you get for Christmas that year? And he goes, uh, I don't remember, but I'm sure I had fun with it. But the memory of the trip, you know, is something that he could have forever as opposed to it. So when you challenge yourself, you're putting two things, a positive memory and an accomplishment. You know, why not just stack those up for yourself as things go by and as days go by and as months go by? Uh, I have a cousin who's turning, I won't say her hot rage, just in case anybody knows the cousin, uh, but she's turning a significant multiple of 10. Um, and it's not 20 or 30. And she just went back to start her doctorate. And she has the idea, well, I'm gonna be that age anyways. Why not say that I also have a doctorate? And that's exactly the mindset that we're talking here. So you did hit me, Joe, with um, that, uh, excuse me, with that, um, uh, hey, let's do the Grand Canyon. I think it literally was like the day before chemo or the day I was at chemo. Exactly, man. I was like, but, let's, uh, let's go. A like, little encouragement or, you know, scary. But, uh, but, 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 but truly, truly um, um, but honestly, honestly it is something, something that needs to get on the calendar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, our, our friend, friend Kyle, Kyle um, um, he, sent he sent me one, me one uh, 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 sermon, uh, and the, the word was arising. And he said, everybody should have an arising if you're looking to be healed. What is it you're going to do that shows that you believe that you're going to be healed? You know, and mine is just going out there, exercising every day when I can get up to it, get out the door. Um, and, this and this planning, planning for this, for this uh, trip, trip would be, would be an arising. Yeah. You know, that you're, that you're just, just believing, believing you're going to get an admission, admission completely, completely healed, healed uh, um, and be able to take this trip. trip. Yeah. And I think, uh, no, for sure, for sure. And just being able to have something to look forward to. So we'll get it figured out, man, for sure. So why don't we uh we're at like i don't know how many minutes we're at like 30 minutes almost so why don't we shift gears to looking ahead so i know the dj v on fire podcast had a, had a little following that was pretty dedicated pretty pretty uh strong fan base and like they were committed to listening every week um talk about a little bit about where you see this going um here after today's episode which again is kind of like 
Well, first off, it's kind of a check-in with you, and we're probably going to see another check-in um, towards the end. Of the, we're recording this in October of uh, 2023, so maybe towards the end of this year. But um, but outside of that, like some thoughts about you know you've been talking to some folks and all that. So yeah, yeah so just, just close on that. that um, um, you know, you know if, you, if, you, if you're if more interested, interested in more than the the, um, the path, path that, that I'm on currently, currently that, 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 that challenges that, that I'm facing, facing uh, um, you can follow DJ on, on fire uh, on Instagram. If you're not an Instagram follower, you know I sent an email. I don't know. Joe's probably going to say, don't say this, but uh, my email is djv at secondplacechurch.com. And so if you had other questions, if you wanted more details about what treatment I'm going through, how it's going, how am I keeping my mindset, um, I would love to talk to people about that because I know everybody is going through some kind of battle um, and maybe even a similar battle individually or with a family member. So by all means, please reach out um, any way is possible, and uh, I would love to talk to you. Um, or maybe you're just interested in the whole mindset thing that we've been talking about uh, over the last few years and want to get involved or uh, get more information on that. Um, the podcast started because we wanted to get to know more people of Second Place Church. And so we kind of would just, I, I would find random strangers. Um, it started with Joe and then it kind of just goes through, we happened to hit some people that were in the band, but not everybody was in the band. Uh, we happened to talk to... Uh, People that worked with the kids, but not everybody worked with the kids. We talked to um, just people that every day come in on a Sunday, leave on a Sunday. You know, or they get a link, you know, some involved on some of the, our outreach things. things but, but, um, um, it's just, it's a, just way, a way when you, when see, you the see the same, same faces day in and day out on a Sunday. Um, and so we want to kind of get back to that. We did a good, we called it two seasons, but I think we did a fair 15, 20 people um, the first run. Um, logistically we just didn't keep it running through 2022 um but we're hoping to get a kick it off here at the end of 2023 and, and beyond so i've got i actually have i'm going to use the word slew i have multiple people um that are hoping to get on and we just tell their story how do they end up at second place how did they end up you know believing what they believe um just kind of the ins and outs what is it they struggle with what is it something that uh you know, they've been able to overcome. And so that's kind of the direction of the podcast. It's just, um, you know, your everyday person when you're like, I had no idea. The, the things that I found out over those 20 or so uh, episodes, I'm like, I had no idea this person had lived through that, survived it, lived through that, um, was challenged with that, um, came from here. Uh, it, it was just incredible. So, so uh, you know, we're, we're all, all fighting, fighting a fight. fight. And, and I think, I think that's, that's what the podcast, podcast is kind of kind about. Of, well, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's one of the things that we, we like to say, which is, you know, you matter uh, to people like you matter and your story matters. And I think that's what's beautiful about what you're talking about is that it gives us a chance to hear, hear a story that we might not otherwise hear um, to your point. And I wanted to say to you, man, on behalf of everybody that's listening in is thank you for sharing your story on this episode and catching us up on life in the DJV uh, world. I, I know that uh, I'm not the only one when I say that we're all in your court praying for you. The fam, I know you've always said pray pray and support the fam. You know, that's that's your heart. And so, you know, we've got, um, you know, we're rallying around them as well. And so um, just want to say appreciate you, man. And um, yeah, I, I'm excited to, to, to see this thing, uh, that, to, to get it to where it's, you beat it and we're we're, uh, we're on that trip and we're making something happen. So um, thank you, man. And I'm excited for the next uh, the next couple of episodes. I know we can't promise exactly when they'll come out, but keep on the lookout for it. Uh, uh, yeah, we're yeah, a twist, twist of a of podcast, podcast show here. here. Uh, you know, I no, kick I it kick off it and then you kind of take, take over. over but, but, uh, <laughs> I do appreciate that. Yeah, that is is close us out. Close us out. I'm not going to pop back in. But the one thing we didn't say – Throughout, throughout the whole, the whole thing, thing is it's day, day one. one. Uh, uh, it's, it's strange. strange. I, think I think Joe was, it's, it's day, day one, one means, means you can handle anything, anything for a day. day. Sometimes, sometimes you can't handle it for a day, day you take it by an hour, hour or a minute, or even, or even uh, uh, you know, 30, 30 seconds, seconds at a time. time. Um, um, but, but I do I believe, believe that you can handle anything for a day. And that's just the way I'm tackling this. That's the way I tackle life. It's what I encourage people to do. 
Um, if you want to start new habits, start new things, try new things, overcome something, it just starts with today. So um, that's kind of the motto of our podcast. I have been DJV. That has been J-A-D. And uh, we'll see you soon on the DJV on Fire podcast.